Petra is an ancient city located in the Jordanian desert, famous for its stunning rock-carved architecture and tombs, including the iconic treasury. It was the capital of the Nabataean Kingdom from the 4th century BC to the 2nd century AD and was later abandoned and lost to the Western world until its rediscovery in the 19th century. Today, Petra is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most popular tourist destinations in the Middle East. In this video, we will explore this beautiful site and the amazing buildings and artifacts found in it. Don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe to our channel. The Sikh The Sikh, a mystical gorge that leads to the ancient city of Petra in southern Jordan, is a wonder to behold. This natural geological fault created by tectonic forces and later smoothed by water, is an awe-inspiring sight with walls that stand between 91 and 182 meters in height. At the entrance to the Sikh, visitors will find a reconstructed dam that dates to the 1st century BC, which was used to control the waters of Wadi Musa. Also, located at the entrance are the remnants of a monumental arch that sadly collapsed in 1896 following an earthquake. For centuries, the Sikh served as the grand caravan entrance into Petra, and along the walls of the gorge are several votive niches containing Baitali, suggesting that the Sikh was sacred to the Nepetean people. In 1998, while digging was conducted to lower the road, a group of statues was uncovered. The figures of two merchants, each leading two camels, are almost twice life-size and provide a glimpse into the ancient trading culture that once thrived in Petra. Along the Sikh are also underground chambers that still leave archaeologists puzzled. While they were not used as tombs or dwellings, it is believed that they once housed guards who defended the main entrance to Petra. The Sikh's narrow and dimly lit passage, with its towering rock walls and rich history, sets the stage for a thrilling adventure. And it all culminates at the end of the gorge with Petra's most elaborate ruin, the stunning Al-Khazan, or the Treasury. A visit to the Sikh is a must for any traveler seeking a one-of-a-kind experience steeped in culture, history, and wonder. The Treasury, al Khazna. Hidden away in the ancient city of Petra lies the stunning al Khazna, also known as the Treasury. Carved out of a sandstone rock face, this elaborate temple was originally built as a mausoleum and crypt for the Nabataean king Aretas IV in the 1st century AD. The intricate facade is adorned with sculptures of various mythological figures associated with the afterlife. And at the top, four eagles stand guard to carry away souls. Inside, the plain main chamber and three antechambers offer a stark contrast to the ornate exterior. Legend has it that the decorative stone urn high on the second level contained the treasures of the Egyptian pharaoh, who escaped the closing of the Red Sea and continued in pursuit of Moses. Another local legend speaks of ancient pharaonic treasures hidden within. Unfortunately, the urn has suffered significant damage from bullets attributed to Bedouins who believed the legends. Since its rediscovery by Swiss explorer Burkhardt in 1812, Petra and al Khazna have become popular tourist attractions, bringing economic benefits to the region. However, the site faces threats from increased tourism, including damage from humidity and physical contact. Despite these challenges, the allure of al Khazna remains strong, drawing visitors from around the world to marvel at its ancient beauty. The Theater You can experience ancient history at the Petra Theater, a remarkable Nabataean theater that dates to the 1st century AD. Carved out of solid rock and located just 600 meters from the center of Petra, the theater is a masterpiece of ancient engineering. With a seating capacity of approximately 8,500 people, it was even larger than the famous Amman Theater. Constructed during the peak of Nabataean cultural and political activity under Aretas IV, the Petra Theater was a symbol of the kingdom's prosperity and power. The design of the theater follows the architectural patterns of Roman theaters, allowing for superior acoustics. However, the Nabataeans put their unique spin on the construction by carving it out of rock rather than building it as the Romans did. Despite being influenced by Roman design, the floral capitals of the theater are distinctly Nabataean, showcasing their artistic prowess. Interestingly, the theater was built to provide visitors with a view of the largest number of tombs possible. Minor alterations were made over the years, including by Aratus's son, Malachus II, and the Romans who rebuilt the exterior wall. Colonnaded Street 
The colonnaded street in downtown Beirut, Lebanon, was once a bustling commercial street during the Roman and Byzantine periods. It was discovered during the mid-1990s excavations and is now a fascinating archaeological site. The 400-meter-long street was paved with successive layers of mosaics, displaying various geometric patterns and natural motifs. The mosaics are incredibly well-preserved and are a testament to the skill and creativity of ancient craftsmen. In addition to the mosaics, more than 10 shops were discovered during the excavations, each one identified by a Greek letter marked on the mosaic floor. These letters were written from right to left in a manner like Arabic script because the street ran from east to west and would have been a hub of activity during the Roman and Byzantine periods. Colonnaded Street was an important part of Roman Berytus, which was a prosperous city until it was destroyed by an earthquake in 559 AD. The street connected the center to the Hippodrome, or racetrack, in Wadi Abu Jamil. The portico, likely discovered on the Souks excavation, was colonnaded, and it had sidewalks on both sides. In 1963, a group of five columns found on the left of the St. George Maronite Cathedral were once part of the Grand Colonnade of Roman Berytus. These columns are a fascinating reminder of the city's rich history and the skilled craftsmanship of its ancient builders. Overall, Colonnaded Street is a must-see for anyone interested in ancient history and archaeology. The well-preserved mosaics and shops provide a unique glimpse into the lives of people who lived during the Roman and Byzantine periods. The Garden Pool Complex the Petra Garden and Pool Complex in the city of Petra was originally thought to be a market area, but recent excavations have revealed it to be an elaborate Nebatean garden with a large swimming pool, an island pavilion, and an intricate hydraulic system. This unique structure is the only known example of its kind at Petra or other Nebatean sites in the region. Located along the main colonnaded street of the center of Petra, between the Great Temple and the Middle Market, the complex played an important role in local civic life. It consisted of large ornamental gardens bisected by walkways and smaller structures, leading to a pool measuring 43 by 23 meters in length and width and 2.5 meters in depth. The pool could hold over 2,000 cubic meters of water, and in its center stood a pavilion on a sandstone pedestal. The entire complex was slightly painted in dark red, orange, and bright blue, creating an awe-inspiring sight for visitors entering the city from the surrounding desert. Excavations have revealed that the complex was built during the reign of the Nabataean king, Aratus IV. At least nine distinct phases of construction and renovation have been identified, with the complex falling out of use in the late 2nd to 3rd century CE. The site was then used for agricultural purposes until the middle of the 20th century. Excavations of the Petra Garden and Pool Complex began in 1998 and continued for eight seasons, revealing evidence of complex hydraulic management, exotic plants, and a large swimming pool. This unique structure has since featured prominently in discussions about the wealth of elites of Petra and the role of water in displaying power and prestige. The Great Temple the Great Temple at Petra is a stunning complex covering an area of 7,560 square meters. It was likely built in the early 1st century CE and occupies a prime spot in ancient Petra. The purpose of the complex is uncertain, but it may have served as a religious or administrative building. The architecture is impressive, with a monumental stairway and etc., as well as four frontal columns stuccoed in red, yellow, and white. Inside, a theater-like structure with about 600 seats dominate the temple. The Great Temple also boasts an innovative water management system, including two sizable cisterns and a subterranean canalized system. Excavations have revealed many fascinating finds, including elephant-headed capitals, limestone relief panels, lamps, coins, and Roman glass. Nabataean painted ceramics, painted and inscribed plaster, and a bronze plaque have also been discovered, suggesting the construction of the temple began in the mid-late 1st century BCE. A cultic or votive figure carved in bas relief was also found, suggesting that the Great Temple may have been used as a place of worship. Qasa al-Bint The Qasa al-Bint is an ancient religious temple located in Petra, Jordan. It is one of the best-preserved structures in Petra and was a focus of religious worship. The temple is believed to have been dedicated to the Nabataean deity Dushara, but there is also evidence to suggest that Zeus Hippasistos and the goddess al Azza Aphrodite may have been worshipped there as well. The temple is constructed of ashla blocks, and the entrance is provided by a monumental marble staircase. The structure was built in the 1st century CE, although there is evidence to suggest that it was built on the remains of an earlier monument. 
The temple was vandalized and burned during the Palmyrian Revolt in 268 to 272 CE and was later occupied and looted for building materials during the medieval period. Despite being vulnerable to earthquake damage, the Qasa al Bint remains standing and its wooden string courses may have helped enhance its energy dissipation capacity. The Temple of the Winged Lion the Temple of the Winged Lions is a Nebataean temple complex located in Petra Jordan, dedicated to the supreme goddess figure of the Nebataeans. The temple dates to the reign of King Aretas IV between 9 BCE and 40 CE and is situated in the Sacred Guitar of Petra, an area comprising two majestic temples. The temple's grand entrance consists of a large double colonnade leading into a cella flanked by a mixture of engaged and standing columns. Fragments of 12 columns topped with winged lion figures were found in the temple, giving the temple its modern name. Opposite the doorway are two sets of stairs leading up to a raised platform and altar with niches built into the walls behind it. The temple also housed workshops dedicated to painting, metalworking, marble working, and grain processing. The interior walls of the temple were originally decorated with stucco, marble, plaster, and painted in bright colors and adorned with intricate frescoes reminiscent of Greek initiation scenes at Pompeii. The temple was dedicated to the supreme goddess of the Nebataeans with the I Batal, or I Idol, as one of the most iconic items recovered from the temple, a square limestone steel decorated with two eyes and a long nose, representative of the goddess and most likely utilized as an object of worship. The goddess's identity is uncertain, but it is believed to be either Alat, al uzza Artagetus, Aphrodite, or Isis. The temple served as a space of religious ritual and worship, most of which took place in the cella of the temple. The west side of the temple functioned uniquely as a place of manufacture of marble figurines, iron and bronze items, religious altars, painted ceramics, hooks for hanging meats and poultry, and even luxury items such as oils, perfumes, and frankincense and myrrh from southern Arabia intended to be shipped to the Roman world. The control of a multitude of goods intended for export ensured a degree of financial self-sustainability for the temple that may have been aided by tourists passing through the temple. The Byzantine Church the Byzantine Church at Petra is a remarkable example of monumental architecture in Byzantine Petra. It is in the city center on elevated ground and is one of three Byzantine churches on the hillside. The church is known for its well-preserved mosaic decoration and is the find spot of 140 papyri, referred to as the Petra papyri, providing valuable information about life in both Byzantine Petra and its rural surroundings. The church was built in the second half of the 5th century and continued to be used as a religious structure until the early 7th century when it was destroyed by fire. The church includes a baptismal complex, an atrium, and a cathedral. The mosaic floors of the nave are decorated with opus sectile floors, while the two smaller side aisles are decorated with colorful figurative mosaics depicting seasons, animals, people, pottery, and plants. Conservation work has been done to preserve the mosaics, but challenges were encountered due to the detachment between mosaic layers, swelling, deterioration of the preparatory layers, the efflorescence of soluble salts, and poor condition of tesserae. The Byzantine Church at Petra is a unique and significant piece of Petra's Byzantine history, showcasing the remarkable concentration of church wealth in its three hillside churches. Palace Tomb The Palace Tomb is one of the most impressive monuments in Petra, an ancient city in Jordan known for its rock-carved architecture. It was built towards the end of the first century CE and is named for its resemblance to a Roman palace, although there is no evidence that it was used as such. The facade of the palace tomb is 49 meters wide and 46 meters tall, with three stories. The first story has four entryways into the tomb, while the second story features 18 engaged columns. The third story, which is mostly built rather than carved into the rock, is partially collapsed, but most likely had more columns than the lower stories. In 1988, the palace tomb suffered block failure and major cracking, which led to a UNESCO-funded restoration project. Today, visitors can still admire its impressive size and intricate architectural details. The palace tomb is just one of many fascinating historical sites in Petra and offers a glimpse into the ancient Nabataean culture. If you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comment section.